It's 2024 and Rafa is back. It's so exciting. This is a great time to be a tennis fan. I got up early in the morning and watched uh, this classic rivalry. They've had some amazing matches, Dominic Thiem and Rafael Nadal. And I'm going to break down what I thought, give Rafa a grade on everything from serves, forehands, backhand, his movement, which we're certainly very interested in as a Rafa fan. Uh, his mental toughness, which is never really questioned, but, you know, I hadn't played a match in a long time. And in Rafa, typical fashion, he's always kind of downplaying, you know, what he expects and what he thinks he can do out there. So uh, be interested to hear your comments, too, as I'm going through everything. Uh, definitely leave your comments. Let me know what you think look great. Let me know what you think Rafa still needs to improve to be playing some championship tennis. Uh, but I was very impressed and highly encouraged. So let's get into this video. All right, so the first thing that we're going to look at and give a grade to is the Roth and the Dow serve, which I think is a very underappreciated weapon that he has, especially when he's focusing on getting some free points or really dictating the point rather than just getting the serve and play. So I think he's kind of have a more aggressive main mentality uh, because he probably doesn't want to play extremely long points whenever you can avoid it with with everything he's been through so i think it to me let me know what you guys think it looked like he was more aggressive with not only his serve placement but his serve speed really trying to get some free points and get on top of his opponent early watch this awesome lefty out wide serve we're going to watch regular speed then we're going to watch it in slow-mo and then we'll take a, look, a couple uh, more clips we'll take a look at a serve amazing how far he gets him off the court And that's 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 pretty cool. Is Rafa uh, when you watch this match? Let me go back to that serve. When you watch this match, uh, the first set, very interesting, was was a big serving fest. They they both were holding serve pretty easy, and it wasn't necessarily because they weren't playing well. They were both playing very well, protecting their side of the court. Look at that out wide serve. Okay, look at that lefty out wide serve. I love that. Look at how far Dominic Thiem is out there off the court. Let's just let's just uh, circle that so we can see how far Rafa can make him run in two shots. So he did a great job. I noticed he was really getting that out wide serve off the court, maybe even more than normal today. And so there is the second place where Dominic Thiem is. So that's pretty pretty far away, is right there, and then. Rafa just has him on a string. Here's number three, okay? You want to talk about using the court to your benefit right there. So we'll just, we'll just, whoop, whoop, yes. And I love how Rafa uh, is showing that very aggressive, no hesitation coming in. Lots of big points where he came to the net. Uh, held serve easy most of the match. Take a look at a couple more serves here, then we'll get a final grade. Okay, so the next I'm going to show you back-to-back -back aces out to the forehand side. It kind of remind me of, and I'm not saying Rafa's like in championship form to win like the Australian Open right now, the way he won the U.S. Open. But there was a year when he won the U.S. Open where everybody was talking about how he was going for more aces, hitting the serve bigger. I thought I saw more miles per hour on the serve in general, and more just trying to go for aces. Take a look at this right here. Boom! There's one ace. Two aces in a row right there. I mean, sweet. So uh, let's go back, check those out in slow motion. I, 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 just, lo I just love to see Rafa acing people, uh, especially because I'm a, I'm a lefty myself. So let's go back to that ace. Okay, so uh, Rafa going out here as as a lefty. When we're going for for big serves, we're basically usually going out here. When you're when you're really trying to get maybe a free point, you're looking to flatten that out and going out there. And I noticed Rafa did that more. So here he is going up, getting fully extended. Look at that. And so I think he has been working harder on serves like this. Uh, just going for more, taking more risk, really hitting the spots, 
getting more pace on the ball, knowing that it's going to, if I can make this through the whole year, it's going to be a long year. So I need some free points. I really need to start on offense. Don't want to be grinding out point after point when I've had the injuries I've had. So you can tell he's been working hard on his serve. Therefore, my grade, let me know what your grade is, guys. My grade on the serve, A+. Plus. He held serve easy the whole day, got lots of free points, and also did lots of serve plus one big forehands or following up to the net. A plus on the serve for Rafa. Let's go on to the return of serve. Let me give your grade below too, what you thought about his serve. Okay, let's get in the return of serve. And what we're looking at right here is actually one of the bigger points in the match. It, it was a deuce point. Uh, or, yeah, I think it was deuce. I was thinking of it was deuce or 1540, but now I think about it. I think it was a deuce point. And it was a second serve. This is a second serve we're looking at. And so we can see Rafa is staying way back here, just in like, let me get this thing back mode. Okay. So he's just trying to get the ball back. And right here, this happened actually a couple times where he's just trying to get the ball back in play. And look at that. Doesn't even get in play. Also, I noticed in the, uh, on the return of serve, especially the first set because the second set went pretty easy. I didn't know how much it was his lack of playing and seeing serves or Dominic uh, Thiem just serving that well. But Rafa struggled to get back a lot of Dominic Thiem's uh, first serves. So Dominic Thiem was getting some pretty good free points. And then there were some returns I thought, okay, Rafa actually returned that pretty well. And then um, – Dominic with his serve plus one game was on point. So uh, if there is anything that you're looking at after this match, one of the things that stood out is return of serve. Definitely probably not where it needs to be. Uh, it, it, it might have been one of the very few things that he might be critical of when he goes back in the locker room. So I'm going to give the return of serve. It wasn't terrible, but for Rafa and especially the tour, I'm going to give it a B minus. Let me know what you thought of his return of serve. All right, so let's grade that Rafa forehand. Uh, we know that Rafa's got one of the all-time great forehands. It's really hard to pick apart, but when he is not playing well, the things that have happened to him in the past have been maybe the forehand's too spinny, it's laying a little short, he doesn't run around to hit forehands as often. Uh, these are all like stats you can actually find. The, the, the RPMs are lower, uh, doesn't flatten out the ball as much. Well, good news for Rafa fans today. None of that was apparent. Let's take a look at this point right here. So running around, hitting the forehand. Now, that's a signature Rafa forehand right there. <laughs> let's, just, let's just rewind that just a tad for uh, all the Rafa fans. This is, what, this is what we like to see. We like to see a forehand. We want to see him blow, deliver that punch, right? So here he is. He's set up, puts all his... Rafa spin on that ball. And as you can see, that ball is deep. And Dominic, now I know it's a one-hander, but he usually can handle a lot of shots. And as you can see, that one just got away from him. Just that heavy spin was too much for him. And then I want to show you one just devastating flat forehand that, that easily was probably over 100 miles an hour that Rafa hit in this match. Okay, guys, take, take a look at this. Rafa absolutely punishes this forehand. And what's kind of amazing at it, about it is uh, you're going to see this is pretty much a winner just on pure power. The ball is not really that far away from Dominic. Take a look at this. Poof! <laughs> oh, even take, Let's go back. Let's just look at that forehand. Because what was awesome about that forehand, as we can see, the ball didn't even land that deep. So as, if you can imagine... How hard he hit this shot right here. So he's here. He's behind the baseline. Dominic looks ready for the ball. So he's in good court position. Rafa fires away, fires through that ball. Look where it lands. That ball is basically landing right there at the service box. And still, Dominic can't get it. So what's our grade on the forehand? Rafa, you're a very good student. I'm giving you an A-plus on the forehand. Guys, grade his forehand. We're going to move on to the backhand. Okay, so I just want to make this clear. As a person who loves Rafa, 
um, I think that everything looks solid. Okay, and and you got to be happy with pretty much everything he did. But if we are looking at things, well, what can get better? Which the pros they want to know. Hey, what can I do to get better? I think the backhand could have been a little stronger today. That was definitely the weaker side, as you can see, a pretty good serve. From Dominic, but if there was a side that Dominic was going to, he was picking on the back end because Rafa was hitting the ball shorter on return sometimes and then giving away some freebie points on return of serves. Uh, now, there were some also some great points, which I'll show you a great point after this, where Rafa really mixed up. Not that he was hitting winners off that back end, but he was starting to really mix up the tossman and the slice. And that's when I think Rafa is using his, his back end the best, is when he really is mixing up that that topspin and slice. His backhand slice is so underrated and uh, really can help set up that forehand. So we'll take a look at a good point of Rafa hitting the backhand, and I'll give you my grade. All right, so we're going to take a, a look at a couple points. One is uh, where Rafa uses the slice. Another one where Rafa's got great depth on, on the backhand. And, and a, this is in the real pressure game that Rafa ended up breaking uh, Dominic. So Rafa did have some great points on the backhand side that was putting that extra pressure, creating that break of serve, and then that pretty much opened up the match. So we can see Rafa's back here, defensive mode on the return. And then I love this slice down the line and creates that error. Okay, so great point right there. Next point, good return from Rafa, nice and deep. The classic Rafa forehand. Strong, deep, again, backhand, backhand down the line, and then backhand winner. So, as we can see, the backhand certainly uh, was pretty good, can get better. I'm going to give it a B plus. So, let me just uh, put this in as my grade. B plus on the backhand. Let me know what you guys think. Give it a grade. We'll move on to... A really important thing that everybody's very curious about, myself, probably the main reason why I watch this match, I mean, of course I'm going to watch it, it's Rafa coming back, but I was really curious about the movement. Okay, That's what's kept this guy off the court for over a year now. So let's take a look at that. So as we know, one of the biggest weapons in the history of tennis is Rafa's movement. Rafa makes people miss just out of fear that they've got to make the shot so good because he can get to anything. And it's what's kept him off the court for over a year now. So obviously the movement's a big deal. It's a weapon. And my main concern is how much is it still a weapon? How, how much is he still going to win points just off of, of putting fear into people that he's just moved so much better than everybody? And can he keep it up for entire three out of five set matches? Can he keep it up for this year, which I think is his goal to play this one last solid year? And so let's just take a look at this point. And, uh, you know, is he as fast as he used to be? Well, well probably not. But what, what did you expect to see in this today? I think he, he passed a lot of tests in the movement test. Take a look for yourself. Okay, so dancing around, moving good. Nice little recovery right there. And then here comes the drop shot. And getting there, and not only getting there, but look what he does with the ball. Okay, so that was really exciting to see. I just want to show you one point where Rafa is doing his classic, just floating around the court and getting out of the way of the back and hit forehands. Really encouraging to see. That that takes a lot of confidence. If he's really thinking, okay, I, I can go all the way out here and hit a forehand and still get back for the next ball, that says a lot about what he feels about he can do out there. Uh, I just found this one, though. I got to show you guys this point because this might, this might have been the most impressive moving and most encouraging thing of the match. Watch him move here. Boom, look at that get. Back to back amazing gets. Recovers and gets back in control of the point and finishes it. Oh man, that was exciting. Okay, so just one more movement point. Really love the way he is floating out there. Uh, watch this footwork right here. So moves out of the way, hit that forehand. Again, chooses the forehand, change the direction. Now look at him float there to hit that shot. I love that. I love that. That is exciting. So the movement from what he has gone through, you got to give it an A. 
I'm giving the movement an A. Maybe he can get it up to an A+. Plus, hopefully. hopefully he'll keep feeling better and even more confident in his feet. Uh, I really hope so. But I'm giving an A for, for where he has been, what he's been through. Let me know what you guys think. I know some of you might think, well, he's not as fast as he used to be. Well, of course he's not as fast as he used to be. But still, I would say it's a weapon out there. Uh, definitely use his feet to his advantage today. All right, so let's finish this video up with the Rafa mentality. Um, he is a master at lowering expectations where everybody's thinking, well, will he be able to come back? He's going to be a shell of himself. But I don't think Rafa will ever step onto a court, even if he's not going to tell us, without there's some sort of belief that I can still win tournaments. I maybe can make more one more run at a French Open. I don't think he comes back just to be out there and, and take a victory lap. A victory lap for him means winning matches. So the mentality was there. The, the mindset, everything was, looked great. He looked like... He didn't look like somebody rusty, so I'm giving that an A+. Plus. The Rafa mentality is an A+. Plus. Um, guys, he's worked super hard to get back, and uh, you know there's a lot of training that went into that. So if you're out there watching this as a totally obsessed tennis fan, if, you, if you've watched me, you know I love working with you guys. So uh, just to finish this video up, this year I'm actually going to go to Rafa's Academy and coach. I'm going to go to Patrick Mortaglo's Academy and coach. I'm going to do something called the uh, Total Obsession House in Spain. And we're going to be doing camps here in Atlanta and also uh, at the Western Southern Open. So if you have any interest in training with me, make sure that you go down here in the uh, description box and click on that link. You can also go up here in the card section, click on that link. Get on the interest list to train with me. And we can work hard like Rafa must have done to get back on the court playing this level. Give this video a like if you love Rafa. Give, give Rafa the grade. Give him an A+. Plus. Come on. So uh, we can see Rafa got high marks today, as always, because uh, he's one of the goats. Rafa, good luck. I, I can't wait to watch more of you be following every shot or as many as possible this year. Take care, guys. We'll see you on the next video. If you're obsessed with tennis, make sure to subscribe to this channel.